in adults the type of diabetes usually type 2 diabetes that can be controlled with diet control with exercise and maybe with some tablets type 1 diabetes on the other hand is a completely different type of diabetes usually it affects children below children with type 1 diabetes the parents don't have diabetes at all suddenly something goes wrong in the body what goes wrong and why did it happen this is a question which people want to know all that we know is remember that there are many hormones in the body which can increase the sugar but there is only one hormone in the body which can decrease the sugar and that is when the body is been completely damaged and all the beta cells are gone of the pancreas and there is no insulin in the body naturally if you don't give insulin to the child the child will die because it will go into a diabetic coma the blood sugar will go to 600 800 900 then coma will set in and the child can die so if your child whom you are treating as type 1 diabetes if the parents have diabetes either the father or mother have diabetes please consult your doctor again and find out is my child really having type 1 diabetes because i've heard that parents normally don't have but here we are having and especially if you as a parents and the grandparents also have it strengthens the chance that your child does not have type 1 diabetes but Hello everyone, I am Dr. V. Mohan and I am back again with yet another video in my channel. I have been going through all the questions that you post and many of the comments and one of the requests which keeps coming again and again to me is, Sir, please talk about children and diabetes, juvenile diabetes, type 1 diabetes, insulin dependent diabetes. This is something very important for us. Please talk about it. This request has been coming again and again. So this particular video, I am addressing it so that I hope to answer all your questions. And I hope that this video will be very useful to you. Let me talk about what is called as type 1 diabetes. Now diabetes of different types. Some people think there's only type 1 and type 2. Actually, there are about 40 or 50 different types of diabetes. I don't want to confuse you by talking about all the different types and making it a theoretical exercise for you. But very simply put, in adults, the type of diabetes is usually type 2 diabetes. That can be controlled with diet, control, with exercise, and maybe with some tablets. Rarely, they may need insulin also. Type 1 diabetes, on the other hand, is a completely different type of diabetes. It usually affects children. It can come in adults also. It can come in old age also. But usually it affects children below 15 years of age. Usually. So many mothers and fathers come to me and sometimes they cry. And they say, my child was okay, was going to school was a star performer, was playing all the games, not even overweight, very active physically, not been eating too much of junk food and suddenly one day my child became sick, suddenly started passing lot of urine, going again and again to the toilet and then drinking lots of water. We thought first it's summer, it's very hot, that is why the child is drinking so much of water. But then there's abnormal amounts of water being drunk, going very often to the toilet, the night also getting up and passing urine, terrible hunger, keeping on eating more and more, and instead of gaining weight, the child is becoming thin and becoming very weak. Suddenly one day, the child started vomiting also. Then we realized something is wrong. We took the child to the hospital met the doctor. 
the first thing the doctor did was to check the blood sugar and gave us a shocking news saying that your child's blood sugar is 560. We could not even believe because a normal sugar for the child should have been 60 or 70 or 80 or 90 or something like that. Instead of that, it's above 500. We could not believe because both of us are not having diabetes. Grandparents, no diabetes. Suddenly, how can this child get diabetes? We said it must be wrong. This cannot be our child's blood sugar. How can a child get sugar? You've heard of adults getting. How can a child get sugar? So we went to another lab and tested. By the time, the sugar has become 600. Because of the stress and the anxiety and sugar is also climbing. And therefore, the child was almost in a coma. Then only we realized that the child has got diabetes. We had to quickly admit the child to the hospital. IV fluids were given and then they started giving insulin. Then we thought that after a week or 10 days after giving this insulin, like treating COVID or treating some flu or something, it will go away. Then the doctor tells us, you have to take insulin lifelong, four times a day, if this child has to be alive. If you stop the insulin, child will die. Is this correct, doctor? How can it happen? What did we do wrong? And they start crying. Because of us only, the child got this diabetes. Something we have done wrong. For the parents who have such questions, first of all, let me tell you, you have done nothing wrong. This child got type 1 diabetes, not because you had diabetes. In fact, children with type 1 diabetes, their parents don't have diabetes at all. Suddenly, something goes wrong in the body. What goes wrong? And why did it happen? This is a question which people want to know. Well, to be very honest, we know some answers, but we don't have all the answers. All that we know is that one fine day, the body suddenly gets confused. Now, all of you know about immunity, isn't it? What is immunity? We have white blood cells in the body. They are like the soldiers in our army. It's a fight against bacteria, fight against viruses and other invaders into our body. If something comes in, these white cells will go and destroy them. So that is called as immunity. And as long as you have good immunity in the body, even if you get COVID, nothing happens to you. Like a mild two days fever or cold and then it goes away. But what if your immunity is altered? That is called as autoimmunity. So what happens is that in this child's body, this child who developed type 1 diabetes, due to a certain genetic makeup, which is not because it came from the father or mother or something, the child's genetic makeup, that child has a particular genetic pattern called as a HLA system. And in that HLA system, there are HLA, A, B, C, D and all that we have. There are so many types of HLA. Children who have a particular genetic makeup with a particular HLA pattern, they are the ones who get type 1 diabetes. So when you have that particular genetic pattern, what happens is that there is a possibility that the body will get confused. So how does the body get confused? Now the body cells are floating around, trying to find some invader, trying to find some bacteria, trying to find some virus, and then go and kill it. Immediately go and kill it. That's what it's trying to do. Now, it sees the pancreas, its own pancreas, it is seeing. And then it says, oh, that is an invader. Let us go and attack it. A wrong signal is going. It is getting confused. That is called as autoimmunity. The immunity is altered. Now what happens, the body cells go to the pancreas. And the pancreas, as you know, has, has alpha cells, beta cells. The beta cells produce the hormone called as insulin. So these cells of the body, because of some antigen went, entered into the body, it could be a virus which entered or some antigen, some change occurred in the body. We don't understand it fully. But what we do know is that these cells now see the pancreas and say, this is a foreign body and we must attack it. So it goes and attacks it. And when it attacks it, it is not simply, okay, one small missile is sent out and it is, you know, after that it, uh, it realizes. No, it doesn't realize. It will attack it, attack it, attack it, attack it until all the beta cells are destroyed. Completely it will destroy. 
as the beta cells are destroyed, the first 30%, 40% is destroyed, nothing happens, the body can still manage. But when it becomes above 70%, 80%, 90% of the beta cells are gone, there is no insulin in the body. Remember that there are many hormones in the body which can increase the sugar. But there is only one hormone in the body which can decrease the sugar and that is insulin. This insulin is fighting against all the other hormones you are trying to increase it. But it's so powerful that it can decrease the sugar and keep it normal. That is why people who don't have diabetes, whatever they eat, they can eat a whole tin of rasagulla. The sugar won't go up. It will go up. It will go up to 130, 140. By the time insulin will come and lower it and it will become normal again. Whatever you do, you cannot increase your sugar even if you want to. Similarly, even if you starve, suppose for one week you don't eat anything, you drink only water. Even then your blood sugar won't go low because the body will put out enough glucose. So the body's mechanism is fantastic as long as it is working properly. If it is not working properly, then this is what happens. Autoimmunity occurs, damage to the beta cells will go and damage those beta cells specifically. Insulin production goes down, 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 down. And once insulin production goes down, the sugar will shoot up because all the other hormones are waiting to increase the sugar. So it will increase the sugar and the sugars will go sky high. 300, 400, 500, by the time the sugar, the, all these, the polys we call it as, polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia. It sounds complicated. Polyuria means passing more urine. Poly is more. Polyuria, you are passing more urine. Polydipsia, dipsia means drinking water. Polydipsia, drinking more and more of water. Polyphagia is eating more and more. These are the three polys we call it. These are the classic symptoms of diabetes occurs in a type 1 diabetic child. Now, remember one thing. Insulin is an essential hormone for the body. Now, suppose I tell you, I will give you all the gold you want, diamonds. I'll make you very rich, but I won't give you water. What will happen? After some time, you will die. Isn't it? Without water, we cannot survive. I'll give you all the water, but I won't give you any food. I'll give you gold, diamond, rubies, emerald, whatever you want, you know. But I won't give you anything to eat, only water. You will die after some time because without food, without water, we cannot survive. Okay, I'll give you water, I'll give you food also, but I give, won't give you oxygen, I won't give you air. I'll cut off your oxygen supply, I'll, I won't give you any oxygen. Your nose is blocked, mouth is closed, you can't take in air or oxygen. What will happen? Without air or without oxygen, you will die. So now you know. That without water you cannot survive, without food you cannot survive, without oxygen or air also you cannot survive. I am telling you, without insulin also you cannot survive. So, when the body has been completely damaged and all the beta cells are gone of the pancreas and there is no insulin in the body, naturally, if you don't give insulin to the child, the child will die because it will go into a diabetic coma. The blood sugar will go to 600, 800, 900, then coma will set in and the child can die before 1921 that is what used to happen why 1921 because in 1921 a miracle happened working in the University of Toronto in Canada Dr. Frederick Banting a young orthopedic surgeon assisted by a second year medical student Charles Best they did some experiments in the hot summer of 1921 in the University of Toronto with the help of Professor McLeod, their boss, and another chemist called Professor Collip. These four people created history by discovering insulin. They, for the first time in 1921, they discovered that there's a hormone called insulin. It is secreted from the pancreas. And if you inject that insulin, blood sugar will come down. All this was shown by them, for which they got the Nobel Prize within one year after the discovery of insulin. In 1922, January, when the first child received insulin, all children with type 1 diabetes died. They could live for a maximum of three months, six months, maybe one year if you're very lucky. If you starve them and don't give them food and only give them little, 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 little food so that sugar doesn't go up, maybe two years, very rare for two years. Most children died within few months. When insulin was discovered, 
in 1921, a new life came for children with type 1 diabetes. That's why they got the Nobel Prize within one year. It's the only time in Nobel history that within one year after discovery, a Nobel Prize was given to Banting, Best, MacLeod and Collip. The four of them received the Nobel Prize for discovering insulin. After that, children started living 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Today, I've got children with type 1 diabetes who got diabetes when they were 5 years old, 8 years old, 10 years old, even 2 years old, who have lived for 60 years, 70 years, 75 years with type 1 diabetes. My oldest patient is now 90 years old, got diabetes when he was 14. After 76 years, he's still doing well. But he's continuing his insulin injection. So the first thing which the parents who come from all over the world and from all over India, they come and they come and ask me, Doctor, please stop insulin for my child. And my answer is, sorry, I can't stop insulin for your child. If your child has type 1 diabetes, because in type 1 diabetes, the insulin production is near zero. And if it is near zero, only that insulin is giving life to your child. It's like saying, please don't give water to my child. Please don't give food to my child. Please don't give oxygen to my child. Can you do that? You can't do that. So similarly, you can't say stop insulin for my child. Till now, we have not found a method, although we may find in the future some alternate way of producing insulin or doing pancreas transplant or doing some other thing. They are all experimental. It's still being tried, but that is not the common treatment which we can give for you. Now, I mentioned that if your child has type 1 diabetes, this is the only treatment. Your child may be taking treatment as type 1 diabetes. But is it really type 1 diabetes? That is a question I'd like to ask. I have had many children who have come to me, referred from different parts of the country and even from the world, where they have been diagnosed to have type 1 diabetes by their doctor. Also asked to take 3 times, 4 times insulin. But when we do special tests, there are tests to find out how much insulin is there in the body. So we do that first. Whoever comes to us, even if they say they have type 1, we want to confirm it. So when we check it, we'll find, no, this child is having some insulin. This cannot be type 1. Then there are specific tests for type 1 diabetes. GAD antibody, zinc transporter antibody, IA2 antibodies. They'll be positive in type 1. When we do the test, that's coming negative. So then we tell the parents, there is a hope that your child is not actually having type 1 diabetes, it could be having some other form of diabetes. Could it be type 2? Could it be what is called as monogenic diabetes, where a single gene is affected? There, the clue for that is, the parents will have it. So if your child, whom you are treating as type 1 diabetes, if the parents have diabetes, either the father or mother have diabetes, please consult your doctor again and find out, is my child really having type 1 diabetes? Because I've heard that parents normally don't have, but here we are having. And especially if you, as the parents, and the grandparents also have, it strengthens the chance that your child does not have type 1 diabetes, but could be having maturity onset diabetes of the young, Modi, or one of the other monogenic forms of diabetes. Why should you know that? Because if your child does not have type 1 diabetes, but has monogenic forms of diabetes like maturity onset diabetes of the young or MODY, M-O-D-Y, then your child can stop insulin and can be converted to tablets. You may say, is it possible? Well, hundreds of such children have come to us and we have been able to completely stop the insulin and change the tab ch child to tablets. Very cheap tablet, sulfonylurea tablet, costs hardly a few paisa. And with that, the child does extremely well. So, I'm not saying that all children can be taken off, certainly not. If your child has type 1 diabetes, you will have to continue with the insulin. But we'll be able to guide you and tell you whether your child really has type 1 diabetes or not. Or by doing some special tests, genetic tests for what we call as MODI diabetes or monogenic diabetes, we'll be able to tell you whether your child has some other form of diabetes which can be controlled with tablets. And if that is so, it's a miracle and we'll be happy to help you. But getting back to type 1 diabetes, suppose your child really has type 1 diabetes. Is it the end of the world? It's not the end of the world. I just told you in this video that I have people who have lived 70 years, 75 years with type 1 diabetes still alive 
They have reached 90 years of age, they have no complications, but they have continued their insulin. So as long as you continue your insulin, as long as you do the regular checkup, as long as you are measuring the child's blood sugar, either by using a glucose meter and a strip, or by using one of these continuous glucose monitoring, which you can put on the child's arm and then get a reading, any one of them, and once a year, check the eyes, kidneys, heart, feet of the child and make sure that all the organs are in perfect condition. You don't have to worry about type 1 diabetes. With type 1 diabetes, you can have a long and healthy life despite diabetes. So I hope I have answered many of the questions. Some of the questions people asked is, is it lifelong insulin? Can I reverse type 1 diabetes? Unfortunately, for type 1 diabetes, there is no reversal as of now. And then the other thing which people ask is, when is stem cell treatment going to come? It's coming. It's coming. We are trying to make pancreatic beta cells, insulin producing cells from the stem cells. That research is going on. Maybe one day it will come. Once weekly insulin people are talking about. There are painless methods of delivering the insulin. Pens are so good that it won't cause any pain. Pumps have come, where you don't have to inject yourself every day. You wear a pump and inside that pump there is a small syringe which will deliver the insulin. Automatic artificial pancreas type of insulin pump has come, where the pump will decide the blood sugar of the patient or the child. And then the pump will decide how much insulin to give using artificial intelligence. All that has come. It's not something fancy or which may come in the future. It has already come. So today, we are in the best of times. Because imagine before 1921, if your child was born, before Banting and Best discovered insulin, what is the status of the child? And imagine today we are saying that child can live almost up to the 100th birthday and celebrate despite taking this. So don't worry about type 1 diabetes. Look after your child and your child will do very well. Your child can achieve anything they want. I have seen type 1 children grow up to become gold medalists in Olympic Games. And not necessarily from India, but from other places. I have seen them become captains of cricket teams for the whole country. We have Vasim Akram from Pakistan, who is a good example of that, a good friend of mine. And we have many, many such examples of people who have achieved outstanding success despite being type 1 diabetes. Your child can grow up, can get married, can have children. Your child can become a grandparent in due course. Everything is possible. Can, child can travel, child can go around the world, child can uh, take up any job. Okay, So everything that a person without type 1 diabetes can do, your child with type 1 diabetes can also do. So don't worry about it. And if you have any further questions about this or anything that you wish to clarify, please write to me to this email ID or post your questions or comments in the comment section and I would be very happy to get back to you. I hope I have clarified all the questions and doubts that you had about type 1 diabetes and I wish to thank you for watching. Thank you very much.